discuss LG's latest and greatest entry model to their artsy entry model devices, the Aristo 4 Plus. Yes, folks, we now have a fourth generation device from LG, the Aristo 4 Plus. Very similar to the Aristo uh, 4, um, the thing is this device offers support for some of the bigger, bigger carriers in the US, such as T-Mobile, so that's really where you get the plus from. Um, at least that's been the case for the older models. But before we continue talking about that, let's talk about what this baby packs in. We have a beautiful back, beautiful, beautiful back. Very, very nice design upgrade, very similar to the Stylo 4 and Stylo 5 device. It gives you a beautiful uh, plastic glass-like feel where it gives you a nice little shine. It is fingerprint sensitive, as you can see, lots of fingerprint smudges on there. But again, this is an entry device. What's great about this device is that it does have that facial recognition. You can unlock it with your face. It also has the fingerprint sensor in the back that LG has become known for on the back of their devices. So you could unlock your device through there as well. So LG is packing some new specs in their new LG Oriso device. It is an entry model device, as mentioned before. So we shouldn't be expecting some of the craziest specs out there. But speaking of specs, LG does claim that it has a long lasting battery. We're talking 2890 megahertz. We also have 10 to 11 hours of standby with that. We have a 13 megapixel camera in the back, a beautiful five megapixel camera in the front where LG claims that you could do portrait mode with. Amazing for an entry level model, folks. Amazing. We also have 16 gigs of storage in there. That's not pretty good at all. Honestly, a lot of entry models today, such as the Galaxy A10e, gives you a 32 gigabyte option for a similar price. Pricing wise, we're expecting this to be anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks. We don't really know the pricing right now in big carrier areas, but you can expect a similar pricing to the Aristo 3, Aristo 2 Plus, the Aristo 3 Plus, because again, it is an entry model device. We do have Android 9.0 in this baby, so we do have the latest and greatest Android on an entry model device. The big thing that I've noticed, as I've just been using it, you know, it does have the app drawer. I did set it up to have an app drawer, but you could also just swipe up and get the app drawer. It's a little laggy. It's not quick. So it does have a quad core, 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor. Um, and it does carry two gigs of RAM. I'll be honest with you, I don't think two gigs of RAM is enough today for phones, um, even if it's an entry model device. It should at least be three gigabytes, especially running Android 9.0. Um, so that's a big thing for me. It does carry the USB-C option, so they've upgraded their charging option to USB-C. We do have a headphone jack, folks. Very, very big deal here for a headphone jack to still be on a device. This is a very good entry model device for people that just want a phone that's quick and easy to use. Again, it is a little laggy because of the RAM. We do have a 720p display on the device, so you have a nice clear HD display, um, and we do have a flash sensor in the back as well that's gonna aid in that 13 megapixel camera that we have here. Display, I love to showcase the displays using a beautiful YouTube video at the highest resolution that the device supports. Right now we're gonna use this beautiful video that I've used in all my other snapper videos. This video here is in 720p. And again, it's giving you the best of the best that you can get with this display. Let's just watch. I would say this is very, very beautiful for an entry level device. You're getting that HD resolution there. It definitely is HD. When it comes to audio, with audio, you are getting the sound to come out of this part of the device. So you're not really getting that beautiful all around audio experience. Oh, it's beautiful. Very, very nice video. Very nice display. For an entry model device, folks, it's incredible how far we've come with these devices. Entry model phones with HD displays. You know, one can argue that if this was out five years ago when we had the iPhone 5 or iPhone 5S, this would definitely take the cake um, when it comes to video quality and display quality. Simply beautiful. Alrighty, let's see how it works with the video running in the background just so you can see what I mean about that 2 gigabytes around. So already you notice some lag. It isn't telling it too much. Open up another app, Play Store Time. Internet. Gallery. It does take a little bit to run the video running in the background again. It's two gigs around. You can't really expect this to be so fluid. But yeah, there you have it with the display quality. Let's talk about the camera now. A time. What's up with the camera? Well, immediately I noticed that the resolution on this camera isn't the best. It's very low quality. It's very not HDR. You know, we've become very accustomed to using HDR quality 
aka high dynamic resolution, aka beautiful colors just popping at our faces with these new 4K displays and these new premium level smartphones, even some mid-tier phones providing some 1080p with HDR quality pictures and videos and screen qualities. Immediately you notice it's not HDR. Immediately you notice it's not the best resolution. You do have a 13 megapixel camera in the back, like I mentioned. It does have face detection. You see those little dots there. It's trying to detect the face. So the face of this coffee cup is being detected there. It does have the HDR option, even though I just said it's not really HDR. It says it's HDR. It doesn't look HDR. I don't know why they're saying it's HDR. Maybe if we take the picture, it'll like up-res it. Let's check it out. Let's take that picture, see. See if it gets up res to an HDR image. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it takes a little while. And honestly, folks, it looks the same. It definitely didn't get, it got a little adjustment, but it's not, it's not the best. So let's go back. Um, you do have a couple of options here on the camera. So let's try to go back here, try to show you this interface. It's a little laggy. Again, two gigabytes of RAM ain't gonna do it for me. You do have this option right here. Basically, you could zoom in with the camera up to 3.5 times zoom here. And now you get a nice little pretty picture. It's not that bad, folks. Entry-level device, but you're getting like an iPhone 4S quality camera, folks. Um, <laughs> you could also go back and take the zoom down. As mentioned earlier, it's very hard. Uh, you know, I just took a picture. Um, you do have the Q lens here. Q lens basically means it'll it'll try to scan a QR code. You also have a visual search, very similar to Google's um, Google Lens. Then you have visual shopping. You take a picture of something and it'll search it up on Amazon to see uh, how much that product would cost you. Very nice little features there for the basic camera user. It does have portrait mode, facial portrait mode. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. There you go. So let's see what this is, this little, okay, that's to share. Okay, so you'll share stuff through there. Let's let's leave that. The modes here, you have these modes here, but what's interesting is I don't see a portrait mode for the back camera. Let's go into settings, HDR auto, you can take it off. Okay, we're not gonna take that off, grid. Okay, that's, so now let's, let's go and do the face camera portrait mode. Um, portrait mode's right there. Why is portrait mode there on the face camera and not, not on the back camera? I have no idea, but sure, Janet. <laughs> so yeah, folks, that's really my quick run through on the LG Aristo 4. Two gigs of RAM, it's kind of laggy. It's not the best, it's not the fastest phone. It's 720p, wannabe HDR, fake HDR display. Not the greatest. Um, you have your apps, pre-launch, pre-stock -pre apps, game launcher, all this beautiful stuff, gallery music. You have all these uh, stocked apps. But anyhow, um, yeah, you're getting a basic phone experience, an entry-level phone experience or an entry-level model. Would I suggest this over something like an A10e or a Moto G7? I would not. It is definitely slower. It does have 16 gigs of memory. It does have a meh camera, a meh front camera. It has no portrait mode on the back. I don't know why. It has a meh front portrait mode. It has a meh autofocus and it's kind of laggy when you start using more than a couple apps. So honestly, Aristo 4, not impressing me. Honestly, barely an upgrade. It was an upgrade design wise, but everything else stayed pretty much the same or barely got better. So LG, you need to step it up, girl. You really do. But that was it. That was my review on the Aristo 4 or run through. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, subscribe. Joy the Snapper is here and is here to give you the best videos he can give you. Please subscribe. Please share. Please comment. Please let me know what you think about the device. Will you be getting an LG Aristo 4? Do you want a comparison video? Do you want to see how it compares to another entry-level device such as the A10e, A20, mid-tier, or the G7 devices? Let me know. Um, as always, have a great and wonderful day and thank you for your time. And Joy the Snapper will never sign off the internet because he is part of it. So... <laughs> Smile